Yo, what is going on, Vince Basak here, and today I am here with you guys for another week of the WBE Sword Division recaps, and I am not alone. Hey, what is going on, WBE fans? My name is JB Allergy Side. Please forgive me for coughing and sniffling. I feel like crap, but I'm going to power through this. Awesome, awesome, awesome. And before we get into this week's matches, a couple of housekeeping tips and tricks here for you all. First things first, we are closing in on 10,000 subs on the WBE YouTube channel, and that is absolutely bonkers to me. Like, if you take most of the analysts' numbers, you'd get maybe 10k subs. So there are so many of you guys that it's awesome to see the power of the WBE and what we've been able to accomplish so far. Yes, thank you guys so much for that. And uh, be sure to go check out uh, the shirt shop down in the description below. You can buy a, uh, either you know a shirt with just the WBE logo or the logo of your favorite coach. So be sure to go check those out as well. Absolutely. I actually am waiting on my WBE shirt. Uh, I ordered it uh, two days ago when I got paid. No, three days ago when I got paid. So yeah, I'm waiting on mine. And you guys should go get one too. Now, the last thing before we get into the games is, as you guys did see on our Twitter, go follow it at PokemonWBE, and the YouTube channel, we did end up having a coach in our division drop, the Heated Moe in his Toronto Togekiss. We wish the best of luck to him, but however, he is getting replaced by Automathic and his Nuzleafs. Uh, uh. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, the uh, Nuzleafs are going to be joining the division. But let's see how Heated Moe's last game with the WBE went. He actually ended up playing Duncan Can't Die in his Free State Tour cast, so let's hop right into that. So, Duncan brought a team of Mega Tyranitar, Jirachi, Hitmontop, Lorantis, Blacephalon, and Zygarde 10%, while Mo brought a team of Blastoise, <coughs> Kobalion, Raikou, Whimsicott, Mega Absol, and Uxie. Yep. Uh, I love how aggressive uh, Duncan played with Mega Titar early on, put a ton of pressure on Mo early to deal with that absolute monster. Mm hmm. Uh, rip the calc. Yeah. <laughs> Calking, <laughs> Calking definitely hurt. Uh, calc for level 100 yeah. instead of level 50, and it, it he, he lived the sucker punch. It could have just swept through the game. It was a but, good read, <laughs> except for the yeah. miscalc. Yeah, it was it was like a it was a good uh, moment of dunking showing. Okay, I know what he's gonna do. Let me make sure of this. And yeah. he he mentioned it later in his game. I actually watched his stream <clears> the video went live, and he's like, "Watch this read. Watch this read. Going up to it, and then he goes <laughs> and he just face palms in in the stream. It was Aww. so funny. Yeah, uh, it was really cool to see Lorantis do stuff. Uh, really cool, underrated mod in my opinion, and it was really cool to see it put in a ton of work here. Uh, I do want to say Mo did a really good job of, you know, playing around the Sucker Punch 50-50s with Mega Absol, or Mega Absol versus Blacephalon, not letting Blacephalon just win at that point, so I thought he played that uh, exchange very well. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, his team matchup, when you kind of look at it, was very hard to stop. Blacephalon, mm -hmm. D-Dance, Mega, Mega T-Tar, and, uh, like, uh, Superpower Lurantis. Yeah. It's very hard to stop that with the team Mo had in general, so I can't really fault him for the team he brought. He brought a good team, given the matchup. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. But, uh, as we can see here, Lurantis doing some things, and Mega yeah. T-Tar would have gotten all six. Oof. <laughs> but, yeah, that is how the ball rolls. Yeah. Speaking of rolling balls, let's go into our next game. Because transitions what are awesome. A segue. <laughs> Leave a <laughs> like for that. <laughs> swag ways. <laughs> Jesus Christ. Uh, we have the South Texas Sableyes coached by In Vivid Color versus the New York Marauders coached by Mr. Talent. So the uh, Sableyes brought a team of Sneasel, Nido King, Mega Agron, Halucha, Tapu Bulu, and Mew. The Marauders brought a team of Houndoom, Empoleon, Gyarados, Buzzwool, Stunfisk, and Latias. Awesome. Now. <sighs> Sigh. Rip my lock, first and foremost. And looking from team preview, everything just did so much work. Like, mm -hmm. Nido King had a chance to just absolutely win. Halucha just won if, uh, what was it? If you get well, damage on the Gyarados. Yeah, yeah, he was Mold Breaker. And I, I learned after that it was a misgen. Yeah. And it was meant to be the Unburdened set. Yeah, it's and, really unfortunate. Uh, that just saddens me. Yeah, I loved Houndoom's matchup in this game too. Specifically, Unnerve was really nice for potential Culverberry Mew, or you know, like, of course, Akaberry, uh, Tapu Bulu. That thing just put in a lot of work here, and it was really cool to see how well uh, Drew ended up playing it. Mm -hmm. And not to mention that, but it also goes to show a fact that Vivid's team really does not appreciate Fire and Dark. No. So things like Mega Absol, not Mega Absol, well, Mega Absol, yes, technically, yeah. but um, things like 
that or things like uh, Blacephalon, for example, or Chandelure, <laughs> or other <laughs> things like that uh, have a chance to do a lot of work against mm -hmm. Vivid. So it's something that he can prep for as well and kind of look at. Yep. Uh, Reflects have Vladi to 1v1 Aggron. I thought it was a really cool bring. Um, yeah, just a lot of cool sets on Drew's part in particular. Uh, gotta, you know, obviously gotta shout out Stunfisk doing more things. It killed Halucha, broke a Bulu sub, and got a Psychic Para on it, so shout out to Stoop Kid for doing things. Um, mm -hmm. Unfortunately, it seemed like Vivid was just really off on reading his opponent's set, specifically Mew. He said he was going to predict something slower, being Scarf coming in on Mew, and then we were surprised to see the Scarf Gyarados uh, take out Mew. There's a crit there. I'm not too sure it mattered. It probably did because Mew is bulky. But, it, you know. it did, yes. Yeah. Uh, I did I the calc. So. Mew would have lived and would have killed the Scarf Gyarados, which ended up being the bane of uh, his existence, which mm -hmm. ended up winning uh, talent the game. Mm -hmm. So if Gyarados didn't crit kill, it would have been over. So yeah, there's that. <laughs> uh, yeah, it was kind of this was a game that just sort of turned into a sack fest once uh, Latias went down. But I feel like Mr. Town did a really good job of keeping the correct one cons alive, specifically the Gyarados and the Houndoom. Mm -hmm. and, and Ru's three attacks Buzzwell was super super cool. Mm -hmm. uh, si si I wish I could have done more work, but the Latias set was absolute flames. It was a really cool set. Uh, it was so cool. And remember, everyone, say it with me: Hacks, Hacks is a win is a con. Win con. Let's uh, let's move into our next game here. We have the New Orleans Pelippers, coached by Pokemon Seven, versus the LA Spice, coached by K. Cray. Now, K. Cray and her LA Spice fought a team of Garchomp, Starmie, Porygon Two, Lilligant, Ninetales, and Mimikyu. And John and the Pelippers brought a team of Diggersby, Licky Licky, Mudsdale, Salazzle, Slowbro, and Mega Diancie. All right. Uh, I was asked to read something from our fellow analyst Jacob, as always, who is in K. Cray's front office. Uh, he just wanted to talk, wanted me to say how bad of a play he thought John staying in on Starmie was, since he didn't know if it had Toxic and John ended up not having Heal Bell. He could have just uh, lost the game then and there because Licky Licky, as you guys know if you ended up watching the game, put in a ton of work. So uh, Jacob wanted me to point that out, so shout out to Jacob for that. <laughs> uh, good. That's actually a really good uh, point there. Mm hmm. If Starmie did have Toxic, well, if Starmie had Toxic, if he, if she did Toxic on the Licky Licky, that game turns into so much different, and Lilligan yeah. actually could win the game. Also, shout out Lilligan doing things. Lilligan doing things was cool. Uh, P2 so was also really cool, being able to deal with the two biggest offensive threats on the Pelipper's team, being Mega Diancy and Salamence is a really cool set. Uh, Mimikyu was also a really good bring. She's been playing Mimikyu incredibly well at this point in the season, and this was just mm -hmm. another example of that. Mm -hmm. Um... She really opened her third eye with this Mimikyu set. I thought it was super cool uh, how she ran a minus attack nature to live foul plays. That's pretty cool. I thought that was really cool uh, with the bulk up set, being behind a sub, living it on the sub, being able to bulk up and then break the sub, being at plus one, plus one with her uh, disguise intact was really awesome in my opinion. Yeah. But then you have to you so, know, think maybe if you had that little bit more attack set, maybe you could have done something more to Licky, which, you know... Her team just had no real way of breaking Licky Licky, which is, you know, good on uh, John for preserving it, and uh, yeah, just really, you know, good play there. I also love mm -hmm. the ground spam plus Crobat coverage against k Ray's team. It has a really good matchup there. Uh, everything, I believe, had a ground move except for Slowbro, and then everything also pretty much had a way of dealing with um, uh, Crobat as well. So, mm -hmm. knew the threats yeah. and did a good job prepping around them. Yeah, uh, Scarf Diggersby is always fun, and John's nicknames were on fleek this week. <laughs> uh nice. Yeah, and K really, uh, once Mimikyu and Lilligant kind of went down, it. I don't think that 3v3 was played out uh, properly, in my opinion. Yeah. Uh, it could have been played out so much better, in my opinion, with Licky Licky out versus the Lilligant at that point. Could have been so cool. Mm -hmm. um, I did, you know, it's just like uh, letting Sarmi and Chomp die as early as it did was a bit of a problem, too, because she just had, again, you know, nothing for the Licky. Uh, I did like that she risked the Shadow Sneak roll versus Mega Diancie to keep Mimikyu's disguise intact for a little bit longer. Again, like I said, she's just been playing Mimikyu very well, and hopefully we get to see her uh, continue to do so with that month. Yeah, it's been super fun to watch her do that, and really, really cool. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> but yeah, that is all my comments for that side of the game. Same. Awesome. So, let's go into our next matchup here. <sighs> What a game this was. I hyped this up in the Pickums to be possibly the game of the season, and let's see what we got. The Milwaukee Bears, coached by Wolfie Glick, versus the Bronx Baratics, coached by Pokey Aim, a.k.a. Joey. Now, 
Wolf brought a team of Excadrill, Mega Blastoise, Duosion, Verizon Wireless, Mandibuzz, Alolan Golem, versus Joey's Breloom, Crocodile, Zero Aura, Mega Glade, Bronzong, and Toxapex. Uh, yeah, uh, pff, this, this game, the Breloom set was perfect with no Torn, and it just sat in 1v1 to half of, literally half of, uh, Wolfie's team. It's just, he had, he, uh, didn't think it would come and under prep for it massively, and it just put in a ton of work. Um, Spider-Man pointing me, first thing, <laughs> uh, I thought it was, I thought it was really, really funny, the, um, uh, fighting types standing in front of each other, the grass fightings, uh. the, uh, <laughs> the Breloom and the Mandibuzz, not the Mandibuzz, yeah. the, uh, Verizon Wireless standing in front of each other, uh, just Spider-Man's pointing, always fun to point out the memes, but, um, sure. the Crocodile did so much work on matchup. Yeah. Like, looking Absolutely. at Team Preview, you realized that, like, SD, Braylon, and Crocodile did so much work against this team. Mm -hmm. The one thing I do want to point out is, Worry Seed was really cool. However, I'm, I'm not sure if this was exactly uh, Wolf's best team. Yeah, um, it remains to be seen how seriously he was taking it. He said he was taking it seriously, but, you know, who knows? There, only he knows the truth of how seriously he was taking that game. Mm -hmm. I see. think he could have been kind of uh, under playing for the fact that he could meet Joey in playoffs yeah. and he wants to hide some of his best stats. I know some coaches that do that as well and mm -hmm. it actually just worked in another league that is a high high caliber league. So yep. it, it has it has signs of working. It just depends on how Wolfie plays. And it's not that Wolf brought a bad team. It was a really fun team. It's just he didn't have <laughs> anything to break the prelims specifically, the, uh, the Toxic Specs and the Bronze Song. You know, put a lot of pressure on stuff like Exodrill, and there was just not a whole lot he could do to break that uh, sort of team. I just want to point out the Zero Aura set that Joey, you know, had for one week. Uh, with Scarf is gone, it's scouted, like, potentially, you know, Scarf Jill specifically. Uh, that Zero Aura set just really went in, so it's easy to see why he wanted to pick that up for this game. Absolutely. It was really, really cool to see, especially versus a Tornadus. Uh, mm -hmm. Great to have for that week. Yep. But yeah, that's kind of all I had for that game. Yep. It was just kind of a slaughter fest with Breloom just sitting in front of there, and acting like a chancy for a week <laughs> yeah that's pretty accurate honestly <laughs> uh let's go into our next game a battle of the dance we have uh the newcastle needle kings coached by patters aka dan uh and his team was typhlosion snorlax hippowdon terrakion venomoth tapu coco versus dan aka a drives minnesota vikavolt with venusaur kiron black florgus gastron skarmory and lycan rock dusk all right Immediately, I love the facing strat. Taking advantage of bad hazard removal is always a cool play. Uh, on Dan's, on a drives perspective, I can't say Dan. Uh, <laughs> I also really like the uh, Dual Dance Terrakion weakness policy set from Patters. That's a really cool bring. Um, and unfortunately, this game just sort of boiled down to Sleep Powder, which is kind of unfortunate. Uh, it was only really important in terms of losing momentum, having to click that multiple trans and allowing spikes up for free, which again, with bad mm -hmm. removal, was you know, really crucial it ended up being. Mm -hmm. uh, and we counted four sleep powder misses, so yeah. Dan should definitely be taking a nap. Both of them Both should of them, be yeah. taking a nap after <laughs> uh, this to kind of rest up to kind of get into the next one. Yeah. But um, uh, resident sleeper, first and foremost. <laughs> well, uh, bul kind of, yeah. yeah, bulk met bulk in, like, good plays. Yeah. Um, I think A-Drive's team was defensive but not passive, if that sure. makes sense to you guys. He had bulk when he had ways of dealing with things, but it wasn't like chancy bulk where you just sit there and hope and hope and pray toxic hits and you try to seismic toss and yeah. just sit there. His it's team a lot was of phasing and recovery. Yeah, it was really, really well played. Uh, Sandforce Gastron was so cool, mm -hmm. in my opinion, uh, realizing that uh, it didn't matter because uh, of what happened with Hippowdon. Trying to get some more damage on it was awesome. Mm hmm. Uh, I like how he made plays when he needed to, but never really tried to over-predict anything. Exactly. That's, you know, sort of the, you know, staple of A-Drive battles at this point. Uh, it does feel like he's become a little bit reliant on Kieran Black and Lycanroc for offense every week, but it's been working, mm -hmm. so you can't really fault him for that. And when you have Kieran Black, sometimes you could just switch into Kieran Black and click Z move forehead and just get a kill, which is exactly <laughs> what he did on the hippo. <laughs> And it worked. <laughs> yeah. Uh, going to Patters' side, this game was so long. I worked 40 hours for a week. I filed my taxes. I went grocery shopping. I edited this video before this game was done. 
Uh, despite the lopsided score, like, this is a game that wasn't over until it was over, because I felt Patters did a good job trying to bring it back, and he stayed in the game as long as he could with Snorlax, so despite mm. the score, this was not as, you know, lopsided of a game as it ended up being. No, th this game was a very long and uh, extended game. I highly recommend checking it out, because it kind of shows, um, even if Patters was on the back foot, he knew what plays he had to make in order yeah. to get back into it, and he was making the plays he needed to, it just was bulk meant bulk, and A-Drive played his bulk a little bit better. Yeah. Patterson has been playing really well this season. He just had a couple of unlucky breaks, and you know he just ends up, you know, costing him wins, unfortunately. Uh, but if you know could stick it, stick to that, like for you know an extended period of time, and start picking up wins, I definitely expect him to make a uh, second half run here. Mm -hmm, absolutely. Now going into our next game, we have the Tennessee Trubbish, coached by Deathly I Am, versus the Pittsburgh Pichus, coached by Num Nexus. Uh, Nexus brought a team of Skuntank, Meta Mega Metacham, Zapdos, Gudra, Magmortar, and Expop. Deathly brought a team of Coffer Gigas, Mega Beedrill, Imbor, Tyrantrum, Rotombo, and Gligar. Now, Nexus, no Scrappy on Expop makes me a sad panda. Yeah, like, that was unfortunate. I, I love seeing Expop do work, and whenever I see it on the field, I want to see it do things. Mm -hmm. And Scarf, Scarf Mag was awesome. Scarf Mag was really cool. Uh, fire types in general just are really good against uh, Deathly's team. Mm -hmm. uh, so yeah, really cool bring there. Mm -hmm. uh, sacking Zapdos early was a uh, bit unfortunate, but it you know it's whatever. It just sort of happens. Mm -hmm. uh, on Deathly's side, pretty standard team this week. There wasn't anything yeah. that really amazed me. Um, the only the thing I really want to point out that was like he he just threw away Coffer Grigus, man. That is the mm -hmm. best check to Mega Metacham in the game, and he just threw it away early. Yeah, like, he didn't really make a lot of plays to put himself in a position to win the game. Mm -hmm. I feel like the game was over just as soon as uh, Copper Gigas died, and he mm -hmm. just went back to like I believe it was week one or two where he was just switching in Mons to die. Rotomo specifically, he just switched in to die for no reason on the Mega on the Meg Mortar. Mm -hmm. uh, it's just you know you gotta scout out a little bit. I don't really know what to say in that regard, but you just you know other than you just gotta play better. Like I don't yeah. really have much else to say. It's you know rough game. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it, it was really, the score replicates a 3-0. However, this game was very much more lopsided than the 3-0. Definitely did a great job of bringing the differential down. Mm -hmm. But in my opinion, this game was, came down to positioning, and it was really yeah. key. And it kind of showed a factor of how each coach valued positioning and valued Mons to position themselves to get certain threats in that they could do something with. Yeah. And Deathly never really got his positioning set, and when he did, he didn't go anywhere with it. Yeah, he did a good job of revealing stuff with, like, a... Uh... Uh, X spot and Mag Mortar, and then you know, getting Mega Meta Champion to click buttons and just sort of clean up the game. And again, you know, just sacking the game completely changed once Coffer Gigas died. I feel like you know, it could have been a much closer game, potentially even a deathly win had Coffer Gigas remained alive. But you know, you lose the best Mega Meta Champ answer, and Mega Meta Champ just gets to kill things. Mm -hmm. It's kind of how it rolls, but yeah. It, it was. I, I expect Nexus to kind of keep this play up here. He's been playing very well as of recent, and yep. I'm I'm looking forward to see what he continues to bring. However, his videos are very much not monetizable on the channel. Oh god! <laughs> <laughs> his commentary is top tier. I recommend watching it, but it's very much PG thirteen slash rated R. So be careful. <laughs> but yeah. That is it for that game. Let's move into our last game of the week, the Milwaukee Sawsbucks versus the Rochester Rhydons. All right. Boffin brought a team of Staraptor, Weavile, Suicune, Mega Altaria, Shaman, and Metagross. Uh, Magnus brought a team of Politoed, Clefable, Azelf, Thunder Styrian, Mega Swamper, and Quillfish. Now, first things first, Steve controlled the early game, like, fantastically. Yes, he did. Making reads, making plays to go with him, too. Mm-hmm. Uh, I really like the uh, Altaria set was clean, uh, Hillbell, uh, Hyperpolation Spam was really cool. Uh, All-In Staraptor set was clean too, unfortunately he got frozen, kinda sucks, uh, but he did a good job, uh, Buffin did a good job not letting Hacks just completely snowball and, you know, throw him off his game. I feel like he did a good job there. Um, Absolutely, he, he brought the mid game back perfectly. Yeah. Like, the way he went around and, <laughs> I'm gonna insert a clip here, uh, so context for this. Jodo and I were kind of watching through the WBE games on one of his streams, and I ended up uh, joining him on his webcam here because I live with him, and uh, we ended up watching Boffin's game as it was being uploaded. So we got a first look at it with no commentary, so we were kind of taking a look at it. Uh, Suicune was in against Quillfish, and this is what happened. 
Oh, oh there it is! Oh my god! There it is! Oh, he got it! Oh my god. Oh my the, lord. The like, first bit of hacks to go his way all game. Is the crucial. Is the cleanest kill. Crucial quillfish wow. goes down. This is big. That's huge, dude. Okay, so yeah, it was kind of a crazy thing. Getting the burnout quillfish was so crucial, in my opinion. <laughs> it was yeah. absolutely crazy. Yep. Uh, a couple things, like, I feel like Boffin sort of, like, put together, uh, you know, some of the gripes, I guess you could say, I had with him. He did a good job scouting for the Z-move on uh, Shaman. Uh, uh, did a good job scouting for the Z-move with Shaman versus Thundy. He doubled in the Metagross <laughs> on the potential uh, Z-Sludge Wave. Really like that play. Uh, I really also really liked how he played Altaria and Weavile. Keeping Altaria healthy while killing Toad was nice. And yeah, it also great job wasting green turns late for Weavile to come in and clean. So I feel like Boffin played that end game very well. And, you know, mm -hmm. just overcoming the hacks early, he was able to bring it back and just play very well. Absolutely. Boffin just brought it back so crucially. And it, it, honestly, if you watch the first seven turns of the game, you thought Steve steamrolled that game. Mm -hmm. Like, absolutely. And going from, like, a thing where, like, okay, I'm about to get sick. So, to where you can pull it out by Weavile coming on in and cleaning was yep. super cool. Also, 25% roll to kill with Mega Pert on Earthquake to kill the Weavile. Did not get it in Weavile 1. Yep. I uh, would have liked to see Steve play a little bit more aggressively with his Rain, sweep rain Sweepers mid-game. Uh, I feel like Mega Swamper just had a really good matchup here. Uh, you know, getting rid of that, you know, just doing a lot of damage to his team in general. Uh... I believe he had Poison Jab on his Quillfish, helping to get rid of Shaman as well. Like, yes. Uh, I just, you know, I feel like if he played just a little bit more aggressive with his Rain Sweepers, he probably could have, you know, cleaned that game up. Mm -hmm, absolutely. But we will see what they both do next week. So Boffin has his first win of the season, if I'm yep. correct. So yep. go Boffin. Really good game but, by both coaches, so definitely be sure to check that one yeah, out. Yeah, absolutely. It was a really, really fun game. But, yeah. That is it for the Sword Division recaps. As always, if you guys are curious where the other games are, continue to subscribe to the WB channel and ring the bell so you guys get notified when the other weekly recap goes up or when any other upload we have goes up. Um, with that, JB, your final thoughts? Hashtag disable adblock. As always, we have been your Sword Division analysts for the recap. Other than that, we're going to get out of here today, guys. Peace out, scouts. Peace.